So change the R, the values of R. And then change the value of uh, the initial condition. And um, I should uh, say a word about the wrong Gekata that some of you implemented in um, back in uh, in one of the homeworks um, and use symbolic variables. Okay, and that you know I I, I said you know I, I didn't really um, maybe I made a note that. Um, it's not ideal, but um, but I was <clears throat> what I'm suggesting is to kind of stay away from symbolic computations, and you don't. The whole point of drawing a cut is you want to do it numerically, okay? So um, so if you have troubles um, coding the wrong cut in numerics, um, let let me know, okay? Um, I mean, Rangakara is available, the MATLAB implementation, many places. Um, that's why I didn't, I didn't give you one uh, implementation. But um, uh, let me know if, if you need, you know, um, an implementation that's not symbolic, doesn't use symbolic capabilities. Yes or no? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, now, it will not be hugely wrong that you, if you use symbolic, but it really defeats the purpose. I mean, as you will see from this, um, if, I, if you use the final time t equals 100, for instance, right? With the other values of the parameters and the initial condition and so forth, um, you're going to have to pick the, an H that's relatively small, okay? But not too small. So, so part of your uh, part of part of B, part of the problem B is is you have to m decide on how small the H should be, right? But don't start with like 0 0.000001, okay? Because that's going to take a million iterations, okay, to get to the final time, okay? So maybe start with h equals one, okay? H equals one may be actually too big, right? So how do you how do you see? And again, you don't have to print the the hundred plots for different values of h, but just just experiment and see what h would actually so the largest H that you can pick so that the the trajectory looks like the trajectory of the continuous system. Yeah? Because remember if H is large enough, what's gonna happen? It's not gonna look like a butterfly, I mean like the that at all, right? It's gonna look Yeah, it's gonna look like a weird um, dynamics, right? And that would be a discrete System, but here we're trying to approximate the continuous dynamical system, right? And again, if we use if we use too many, too too small h, that's not necessary. In fact, for running a cutter, the whole the whole point is that you you don't need a very small h to get a good accuracy. And again, OD45, uh, excuse me, uh, the OD solve has um, you can. I can show you that um, if this opens up. But you can choose the different method. So, for instance, you can choose the um, Rangikara fourth order, or you can choose Rangikara second order, or you can choose other fancy um, methods. Um, And you will see that what happens as you as you choose different methods, you you will have a slower or a faster computation. So, so here's um,
everything solo today. Okay, so let's see. What I'm saying is you know what you should get, okay? It's not a problem that you have no idea what it is. Um, so the, in the gallery you have the Lorentz system. And I think it it has different numbers here, but I think the initial conditions are about right. So, okay, so here's... So here's the solution, right? And notice that this is OD45. So this is based on Rangakata fourth order, but it's actually fancier than what you will have to do. Okay? Because what you have to do is you will do it on a fixed time step. So you, you do iterations, just like Euler's method, right? There's Euler's method with fixed time step, except instead of one line, you only have to, you're going to have to do four lines of code. Um, Okay, but you, you saw how, I guess, how quickly it actually compute, did the computation, right? Or maybe you didn't, so let me, let me do it again. Okay, that means it's quite fast, right? If you choose a, a slower, I think a 2, 3, it's probably harder to see here, but if you change this to like 28, which is that famous um, chaotic behavior, the, the time it takes right it's uh, well it's much slower than the fourth order running kind of this is second we could time it I guess um, but if you change it to the fourth order on Kakara you will see them it is faster okay and why is that the H is larger here right so you, yeah, you can choose H really small and do fourth order Rangakara, but you don't have to. It is not necessary. Okay. <coughs> okay. So uh, the last part is actually probably the, the main reason why I made you do this implementation on your own because what I'm saying is to. Uh, to pick two different initial conditions, one close to the other, and compare the two. Okay? Something you cannot do in OD, 40, uh, OD solve. Um, okay? Any questions on this first one? And by the way, I think I, I only say, but it's it's not uh, you know it's not necessary. But it's uh, I only ask you to plot x versus z in this case x one versus x three, I believe. Okay, just so you see something. I mean, you could plot three D, but then it's. Where did you go for that? Well, again, you don't use OD solve. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, 2D face plot. 2D face plot. The output could be so. The output could be time plot, and the time plot. I see. I'm, I think I'm just saying use the second one. You know, just so. Okay. All right. Let's see. So problem number two. So I'll go through this and then talk a little bit about Markov chains. Um, so problem number two is uh, is very similar to well, it's connected to the um, house fire problem. It's in fact is ridiculous. It's embarrassingly similar. Um, all I'm asking is to do the computations instead of two standard deviations from the mean that gives you 95 confidence in interval to three standard deviations from the mean. Okay? Yeah. Can we use 
Uh, you can use anything. Yes. Um, all right. Okay, so let's see. So number three and four um, are probabilistic models again. And uh, the continuous, the random variables um, that are involved are have exponential distribution. So that basically means it's the exponential distribution that um, is in problem two. Okay, and I think that's we talked about this in uh, in, in the chapter as well. Uh, exponential distribution for continuous random variables. For problem number three, right? Um, so it's, it's again a manufacturing um, process. There are two different processes. Uh, one has an expected life length of 100 hours, uh, the other process has expected life length of 150 50 hours. Um, The, the the specific problem here has basically have a cost um, per fuse for one of the process for the other process is twice the cost um, and the cost is not specified I mean the cost um, is just a constant right it's a known uh, Hold on a sec. Okay. Right. The, the cost. The cost of manufacturing is is uh, is known. The only thing that's not known is that um, how long is actually each fuse going to last? If it lasts less than two hundred hours, then there's going to be an extra cost. Um, of K. So all these are, are constants, right? This uh, this are um, parameters in the problem. Um, so, so th what you need to, to set up is sort of the cost as a random variable, right, for each of the process. Um, I mean, what is it going to be the, the cost for the, uh, say, process one? The random variable is going to have two values, right? Is going to have the cost C if if the if the fuse uh, lasts more than 200 hours, and that comes with a probability, right, from the exponential uh, distribution, or cost C plus K, right? That's for process one, and process two is is um, two C instead of C. Okay. In part B, I would just uh, so, and then you have to find the expectation of that random variable, right? So expected cost, and then you can compare the two, I guess. Uh, and part C is just um, if you want to introduce a new new variable that is um, for each additional 50 hours of life length. Um, you can you, you can design the, the manufacturing so that um, it, you double the costs and you gain 50 additional li uh, hours of life, life length. Question is, what would be that optimal uh, sort of life length for the for the fuse in order to minimize the expected cost? Okay. 
So it's a little bit of, I mean, it's, it's a one variable optimization in part C, I think. Any questions on, on this? Yeah. Well, exp when you say exponential distribution is with some rate lambda, and so I think you have to figure out the length, the, the rate lambda for for each of the processes. Uh, no, it's not Poisson. So Poisson will be for a discrete. You don't have a discrete random variable here. Um, it is a Poisson process, if you want, but just think about the random variable as as um, having that distribution. Okay. Uh, let's see. Problem number four. It's very similar to the diet pro uh, diet testing problem. Except here you have some population um, that you can test in individual individuals or in groups, right? So all I, I'm going to say is that it's um, um, it, it has that flavor of the of the diet problem. Um, And actually, we even uh, even specify what x i should be. So as far as the um, x the the, um, the random variable, right? So and then it's just a, a, a discussion or, or um, study of the uh, optimal number of of a per a person in a group that, that need to be tested to minimize. Uh, whatever that uh, expect, expected value, expected number of tests, right? And also the um, other side of the problem is to look at the different values of p, p being the probability of a person being infected or diode being faulty, right? So it's same same thing. Um, Okay, so so you only need, I believe, some some MATLAB. I mean, you only need some com computer. You know, you cannot. I don't think you can do this by hand, especially the last part, which is five thousand. You know, some numerical values. Okay. Any questions on number four? Okay, so uh, we, a few words about number five. Although, um, well, so so the most important thing to to realize here is that um, we're having a, a simple Markov chain. The number of states is some capital N. Okay. So when you start looking at this problem, just <coughs> start with n equals 3 or 4 or 5, OK? But keep in mind that this uh, actually should, you know, should be any, any number n. Um, and then answer part A, part B, right? So, so Again, uh, uh, my recommendation is start with a low number, with a low value for n, for capital N. Yeah, so you can draw a, a, a state diagram, transition diagram. So basically, the arrows of what is the probability of going from one state to another. Then, in part B, you have to find transition metric. So that's going to be a matrix, right? But um, the important thing is to kind of see a pattern that happens. 
so that it, if, if you change n from 5 to 6, how is that going to affect the, um, I mean, how is that going to um, reflect into the transition metrics? So if you can do this for a general n, that's wonderful, okay? Um, in part c, though, the question is, um, well, actually, even in part c. So, so basically, in all this, all these three parts, you can you can start by by assuming n to be some some small number, right? But the um, the real question, which maybe I should have put it here as a fourth question, is what happens if n goes to infinity? As n gets very large, okay? And the answer is when n gets very large, the uh, stable equilibrium vector, which is which would be the probability that you are in any given state with some um, probability, right? Or you visit that state with certain probability. That uh, actually that has a limit, so that you can you can uh, uh, think about the limit as n goes to infinity of that. So maybe I should put that as an extra query problem, but. Anyway, so the point is you want to do as general n as possible, okay? If you cannot do it, for instance, if you have to do, probably if you have to do it on a computer, I think in part C you should do it on a, on a computer, right? So that you do the simulation. Um, I'll show you now uh, how to do it on a math lab. But um, you will have to pick a P and you have to pick an N, right? But the code itself should be you know, should be you should start with this is p, this is n, and then the code should be for general p and n. So you just change the p and the n. And, okay. Okay. So we'll talk about uh, that last piece of how to simulate this uh, with MATLAB, I guess. Any questions on number five? I didn't go through the details of what the transitions are, but you can read there, right? The transitions to the left or or right are equally likely, except at the endpoints. Okay. And by the way, that has to do that has something to do with the temperature distribution, uh, like diffusion in in a if you think about it in a in a, in a uniform rod. Um, that has some um, prescribed values at the endpoint. So, for instance, if you have a temperature that's set to be zero, um, I'm not sure if it's zero is the right boundary. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember exactly. Um, but inside, what happens if you have a temperature distribution that's Say it's like localized in the middle. See if you have this long, just like diffusion we've talked about, um, and you have some localized, you know, high concentration, right, of of the thermal energy or something, right? Then you have this uh, probability distribution of of going to the neighboring states with equal are equally likely. You can go left or right or equally likely, um, but. The probability to stay in the state is different than the probability of, of going left or right. Yeah. So we can assume the heat source is located in the middle of the rod. Pretty much. So so <coughs> you can start with any initial condition. The point is, so so let me. Yes, you can you can start with the location in any. Uh, yeah the source anywhere in the rod and I believe that the uh, boundaries it's insulated so so it would be insulated boundary conditions if you know what that is uh, but it's basically saying that it doesn't you know uh, temperature doesn't there's no no exchange of, of, of energy thermal energy with the with the environment at the endpoints so guess what is going to happen in the long term with the temperature it's going to level off, right? So, 
Um, so you should find something similar with this uh, with this problem. But again, we're not saying anything about diffusion. It's just it's just simply a Markov chain. And again, with a finite number of states, but that number of states can increase and increase. So it would be the temperature distribution would be a continuous process. What you do here is you discretize the space into more and more. Like as n gets larger and larger, you're going to have more and more sites. Okay. Um, okay. So let me let me uh, talk a little bit about this simulation of the of the Markov chain. Markov chains. Um, la last problem. I leave it as as I said. You can read the problem. Um, I don't think it's it's a particularly easy problem. But you can certainly set it up using the Contraghi maximum principle, and you know, again, if you are, um, if you want to try it and see how far you can go with this, okay. Um, I'm not really expecting that you can explicitly write down what the optimal control should be what the optimal well if you know the optimal control even if you know the optimal control you can see the equation in V which is the second component of the velocity is not a pretty one to solve explicitly right because in the right hand side there is uh, there is this exponential of H right but certainly you can, uh, once you have the, the optimal control, if you had the optimal control of T, and T is the control here, um, <clears throat> then you have a system of three equations with three unknowns, right? With, I mean, with three variables, right? State variables. So you could, like, run a cutoff fourth order, you could actually run this. Yeah? Because you have the initial condition. You have initial uh, height, I don't know, it's taken to be one. Initial velocity is taken to be zero. Initial mass is 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 known also, right? So you have the initial conditions. You have the system. The only thing that you don't know is the t, right? So the t comes out of the capital T comes out of the um, Pontryagin maximum principle, right? <coughs> so that's that's the whole difficult part, right? So if you can get t, that's wonderful. Um, Any questions on this? Uh, Friday, twelve to uh, ten to twelve, and um, and by the way, I should have the homework. Uh, well, you're going to turn the homework on Friday, most of you. Um, so on Friday, I have the other homework graded. But you have the solutions to, pro to set number nine, um, and I'll try to grade the set number ten as soon as possible. Yeah. <sighs> They're not out there. Okay. I did hand it uh, for, for everything. Um, let's see. So I did I did hand in the solutions to number nine, eight, and seven. The only thing about I think seven and eight were like together or no? No. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay. So I'll, I'll post it on the e companion. I'll make sure they're they're there. Um, and by the way, I'll, I'll post also the Rangakara as part of that homework problem that in chapter six. Okay. Um, so don't. I don't want to see symbolic Ranga. I mean. <laughs> That's, uh, that, that would slow down this computation like tremendously. I mean, you will it will take forever to do something like this, right? If you do it symbolically. Uh, okay, so here here um, I just want to kind of uh, re re remind you of what. Uh, 
uh, what the main things about the Markov chains what we've talked about and again we haven't really um, talked about all details but one thing that I mentioned last time is is if you put this probabilities of going from one state to another so PIJ is going is the probability just it's kind of bad to write like this unless you specify but it's just a way to say this probability of going from I to J uh, if you put this in a matrix and if you have three states then it's going to be three by three otherwise it's going to be whatever the number of states are it's going to be a square matrix and it has this extra additional property that it's um, it's a stochastic metric meaning, meaning that the summation of PIJ uh, the row sums are all equal to 1 so let's see PIJ uh, summation over J right because I is fixed uh, that's the, the number of uh, that's the row I so this is the I row sum and this is an I, not a J. Uh, excuse me, that's a J. Okay. And of course, all the PIJ are positive. Okay. And uh, so there is there is one fact about this kind of uh, stochastic matrices, which says it's a theorem. It says that if P is a stochastic matrix, which is also, and in addition, it is irreducible, and I'll say a word about this, but so it has an, an, uh, an additional property. Um, then one is an eigen eigenvalue. Is a left eigenvalue if you want. Doesn't matter because left or right is an eigenvalue for p, and um, and there is a unique. Uh, left eigenvector pi star corresponding to uh, lambda equals 1. So remind you what eigenvalue is. So eigenvalue is if I have a matrix, what's an eigenvalue? px equals lambda x. This would be a right angle. Right x is a right eigenvalue, right? Right, right mm -hmm. eigenvector. And this is supposed to be a column, right? Okay, so if I say lambda equals 1, it means that P of X equals X. Yeah? The only problem here is... Um, so that's, that's, that's fine, uh, but what we're interested in is we're interested in left eigenvectors. So similarly, P transpose has an eigenvector, right? Possibly a different eigenvector, but with the same eigenvalue. So maybe I should call this different x, x um, y. Okay, for lambda equals one. Does anybody know why the um, eigenva eigenvalues of, of a matrix and of its transpose are all, are all the same? Because of the property of the term. So, so eigenvalues of, of P and P transpose coincide, right? 
not true with eigenvectors, obviously, but um, the eigenvalues are the same because how do you find eigenvalues of a matrix? You take the determinant of p minus lambda identity, right? And you set it equal to zero. Yeah? Well, but the determinant of the transpose of a matrix is the same as the determinant of the matrix itself. So, so if you transpose this, you're going to get p transpose minus lambda identity. So, so you're solving the same polynomial to find the eigenvalues, right? So it means that if one is la if one is eigenvalue for p, is also going to be eigenvalue for p transpose. Okay? This theorem says that there is there is a unique eigenvector, you know, x or y. Yeah, there's a unique left eigenvector and there's a unique right right eigenvector. For us, it's important the left eigenvectors because if you transpose, so y was a column, right? If you transpose this. Uh, what you're going to get is pi star p equals pi star. So basically, what this is doing is saying that if I, if you consider the discrete dynamical system pi um, n plus one, or I think we use p plus one, uh, k plus one, but um, if you consider this, you know, start with some initial state, which should be a row, yeah, and then do it, do this iteration, which is very uh, obviously it's just it's just powers of p. Applied. Oops. Pi naught to the left times the powers of p, right? <coughs> then this one has a unique steady state, right? So this has a unique equilibrium. Right? Which is pi star. Right? So, what's an equilibrium for this discrete dynamical system? Well, it's one for which pi n is the same as pi n plus 1 for all, all n. Yeah? Are those two alternate pi star? Are you saying this is two alternate ways to calculate pi star? It ends up being two alternate ways to compute pi star, right? So, um, but so one way to compute pi star exactly is to look for the left eigenvalues of p or the eigenvalues of p star of, of p of p transpose eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalue one. The other way is to um, well the, I didn't say yet um, is to to think about this pi star as being a steady state for for this discrete dynamical system, but <coughs> the important feature of this is that, so it turns out that pi star is a, is a limiting, is a limit of this pi n with any, so it turns out, out that pi star is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of pi n for any Initial condition pi zero. Okay, and again, this this still assumes um, that this um, the transition matrix is irreducible, so it has uh, an additional property that needs to be checked. Okay, if if that's not the case, then uh, everything I say is not quite is not always true. Um, I had a question for you. Yeah. If you go, okay, right there that, so I see, right there that pi star P equals a 
I start, that makes sense to me as far as being an equilibrium generation. Uh-huh. Or steady state. Now, if you go up, though, I don't see the... I don't see that there. I don't see that PT uh, transpose of the matrix Y into the Y. Oh, so this just, if you transpose this, you're going to get Y transpose P equals Y transpose. Okay. So Y transpose is that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you want to do MATLAB, um, well, one way, uh, I guess most um, obvious way is to try to find the eigenvectors for P transpose. Well, Right, because uh, so in MATLAB, IEG is where is this? Um, so let, let me write down this this metric. So um, whichever one you want, maybe this one third, one third. One third that we're toying with last time, um, seven tenths, three tenths, zero, one, zero, zero. Okay, so make sure that's the right one. Okay. Um, And irreducible, basically. So this matrix uh, turns out to be irreducible because you can actually so you're picking th any any pairs of, of states. So let's say pair uh, one, one, two. You can transition from one to two with positive probability, right? Uh, you can also transition from three to two. Maybe not in one one step, right? In one iteration, but in so if you do p squared, you see in two iterations, you can transition from any state to any to, to any state, right? In at most two iterations, right? Um, so so that's kind of a way. And if it's not p squared, then some power of p should should uh, should have basically non you know non-zero entries, um, okay. So this matrix is is satisfies that that property, um, and all we have to do is we have to maybe stay with pi. Um, it just start with an initial an initial um, condition, which could be that you know. We know that we are in state one at first iteration, right? Uh, before the first iteration, we are in state one. So this is the probability that we're state one. That's one. Uh, probably that we're state two. That's zero. And probably that we're state three. Is zero. Okay. And now all we have to do is we have to iterate this. Oops. Times p. Right. And as we iterate, what's going to happen is that's a bad way to do it, right? For i equals 1 to 10, um, pi equals pi. Again, don't do this in the command line, right? Better to write a little code. But you see that uh, after 10 iterations, it, it already kind of stabilized, right? So, based on that kind of theory of the mark of, of the of the stochastic matrices, we know that this is going to converge to the to the pi star. Right? So this is going to be actually the pi star. Well, you know, if you wanted more accurate, you have to run maybe more more iterations. Yeah. But how about if we do? So maybe maybe I should 
put it in a coat, you know. Okay. All right, so let's say I have this as my P, and my initial state is one zero zero. Remember, this should be a row. And um, then for i equals 1 to 20, pi is, and I don't have to memorize the previous ones, I just always overwrite. Okay, so I can, I can display all of this so you can see it. Well, okay, so you saw this. Um, Format long pi. Anyway, so you can see more decimals, and probably not all of them will be accurate for pi star, but um, okay. So that's that's kind of a, a quick. I mean, of course, knowing the, knowing the the property of the of the metric p allows you to uh, get this through these iterations. Um, but what's the, alter the alternative way? The alternative way is to just use the eigenvalues of the transposed of P. Okay, why, why is it transposed? Well, first of all, <clears throat> if you just do eigenvalues of, of P, you get eigenvalues, and one of them is 1, right? Um, but if you want the eigenvectors, what do you have to do? You have to extract basically the output to and you see the <coughs> output you see the matrix U that has on columns, it's always on columns, so that's how this function works it's always on columns, right? So the columns are eigenvectors for this matrix P Okay. So how come it's not the same as what we got before? Because <coughs> we didn't do p-transpose. So the, doing p-transpose gives you this vector, right? Again, this is a column, but it should be transposed. So that's, that should be the, well, or maybe not. Is, should it be p star, uh, p, pi star, or it's obviously not pi star, right? What was the pi star that we had there? So never, never work in the command line like I do. But now you can see that, right? So, so, so uh, pi should be pi star pi should be what? U of the first column of U, which, by the way, is not always the case that the first eigenvalue is going. I mean, the eigenvalue one is going to be the first one. It might be here or here. In which case, you have to you can ask the MATLAB to find where the eigenvalue one sits and then pick the corresponding column. Yes. Yes, so uh, so let me transpose that, and now let's see what what it looks like. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Okay, so let me. So this is gonna be pi from iteration, and this is gonna be pi from eigenvector, right? So let me, so let me clear this so you can see that too. Yeah, so obviously they're not the same, right? So what's the additional um, property that we have to, that, that this row satisfies and that, that the limiting probability vector should satisfy? I mean, those are, they should sum up to one. 
because those are probabilities of being a visiting, eventually visiting a state, um, state one, state two, state three. So, so this is not uh, adding up to one. So what you're going to do is you're just going to Sorry for the notation. Just going to divide by the sum. You know they are the same. Okay? By the way, if you do format long, whoops. <coughs> I don't know, it will look ugly, but and it's hard to compare, right? But you could uh, you could see kind of you could make the difference between pi. You could see the maximum between the difference between pi iteration and pi from eigenvalue, and that's ten to negative six. Okay, and that's just bec that's that's because you do 20, 20 iterations. But if you do thirty iterations, ten to neg negative nine, right? So it's it's converting very fast, actually. No, well, relatively fast. After fifty iterations, it actually got into the steady state. You know, ten to negative fourteen. Question? There was a question. Okay, so so that's why it's it's useful that that we had this uh, discussion on discrete dynamical systems. Um, this is a very sp special and it's a linear dynamical system, right? So it's in a way you would say it's should be a piece of cake, but it has this very uh, important connection with you know with with Markov chains, um, and so you you think about it as everything. That steady state attracts every every initial condition, right? In the in the state space, if you want. So it's it's stable, right? Asymptotically stable, but it's asymptotically stable, and it has the basis of attraction, everything, right? So that's kind of um, nice about this. Um, and let's see, what else? So as far as your um, exam is concerned, um, in part C, I would say you, you do this through, you know, you simulate and you see if indeed your um, iterations converge to the eigenvector, right, to the left eigenvector of that matrix. Now, if you can do it by hand. Uh, it's kind of paradoxically that you probably can do, you can probably find the formula for the um, left eigenvector, corresponding to eigenvalue 1, when n is general rather than when n is 5 or 6. Okay? But again, I'm not necessarily asking for that, so um, the general n. Okay? And let's see, so the last one that I wanted to show is there is um, a very nice, important application, if you have not seen it before, um, the Google PageRank um, is the idea behind ranking pages on the web is based on um, uh, Markov chains. And uh, let's see, where's, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, this is part of a book by um, Cleve Moller. So there's a, you can see the, the actually the whole textbook. Uh, and chapter number five, or one of the chapters, linear equation, chapter number three. Uh, two, two, actually, okay. Uh, talks about solving linear systems. And as an application, it has. Oh yeah, I should have said that. You could actually try to do this also by solving the linear system. So maybe I should say this. Um, but let me show you the 
Okay, page rank. So, the, so it has. Uh, <clears throat> if you've never seen this, it's a very nice um, application. So it kind of shows how these metrics of um, connectivity of different websites is 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 uh, created, and then that's the metrics A in this case. Um, and then it's looking for this limiting probability. So the, it's looking for a probability. So it wants to assign what's the probability that you're going to visit that page eventually, right? So the pages that have high probability are higher ranked. Um, and let's see. There is a there is a third way to kind of find those when you have a huge metrics like this. So when you have a huge metrics, just calling the function EIG from MATLAB is not necessarily the best way to go, right? Because in the end, you just want one eigenvector corresponding to one eigenvalue. You don't want all eigenvalues, right? So, so this is actually an implementation of that. Um, oops, sorry. The code is very simple here. Um, where you just uh, back, you know, from the uh, the last step is to kind of normalize it so that the sum is one. Uh, here is where, where you actually solve that identity minus the matrix A, yeah. And I'll go, there, there are some uh, reason for for uh, using this. Okay, but this is actually kind of a fast way of just finding the the uh, the solution to that linear system. So I just say that. Um, which is something probably, if you read the book, you, you saw it there. That um, so to find pi star, one can also solve a linear system, which which uh, would basically be the following: say pi one. So let's say pi star is pi one. Pi two, pi three. So then it would be pi one, p one one plus pi two, p two one plus pi three, p three one equals pi one, right? Two more. The three equations and the fourth one is pi one plus pi two plus pi three equals one. Okay. Right. So this is just saying pi times matrix P is is. So these three are just uh, another way of I mean writing on components. Right. What this matrix equation is, and the last one is the sum of the components is one. Um, okay. So you can see that uh, there, this is the same as putting the identity minus P oops, times pi. Right, and then the sum of pi equals one. Okay, but the the, the tricky part is you, you how do you solve this system of the first three equations, right? Uh, when this system is, let's see, it's homogeneous, and it's so it has infinitely many solutions, right? Because the determinant of this matrix is zero, because p has eigenvalue one, right? So, so this is a, <coughs> this is an implementation of that um, okay, of this uh, of how to solve this system efficiently or quickly. And uh, let's see. So I think it comes out with a very nice. Uh, um, illustration of what this uh, looks like. So, if you have a, a web of like six, just six, um, six websites, and different uh, probabilities between the assigning different probabilities between kind of link, linking from one website to the other um, gives you a 
ranking. Okay, and you can do this for lots of lots of um, uh, lots of you know a web, a web with with possibly you know millions and millions of of websites uh, of websites. Um, let's see. I don't. I'm, I'm not going to have time to show you. Um, but if you follow this, you can. If you follow this syntax here, you probably will be able to um, surfer. You have to download the software that comes with it. Surfer. Okay, so. So basically, the if you put a website, let's say UCCSEDU, and I want to create a hundred uh, web of a hundred sites, then the first step is to create what's called the connectivity metric. So for the you can see here a kind of bookstore and other places. So this would be sort of the places. So it, it <coughs> life it goes to that website and it looks for the links, and then then it goes to those websites and it looks for those links, and it creates this matrix. And this matrix is, I believe, G. <coughs> so I'll let you do this. Um, and has anybody seen this? Uh, then if you go to you go to the next. Mm. Okay, then you can spy on. Okay, so you get to spy. Okay, you can spy and then you can page rank. Okay, so let's see. Is it done? It's almost done. Okay, it looks like it's done. So you can spy on G, which. Uh, I forgot where it should, it should show somewhere. Okay, so that's so it just shows you that, and um, and now you can page rank. Um, U and D, I believe. No. Um. Huh. Drink. Okay, so this is all the connectivity. Um, oh, I didn't. Was it mine? Yeah, it like mine. No, it's mine. It's embarrassing. Sorry. Um, couldn't have waited two more minutes before the. I mean, the class to end. Um, wait, somebody's listening to what I'm saying because I didn't turn it off. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry. So page rank is, is supposed to, I suppo I'm supposed to download this and run it. So, okay, so I'll be done in a second. So, okay. So, basically that's, it's ranking all those websites and you can see um, I think it's hard to see because I put so many, but it, it kind of shows the page, the rank. Um, like UCCS.edu is the first on the on this rank, right? Then uh, portal is whatever, right? So you can see the in decreasing order of the rank, what is the most um, you know most popular in that web, and it has to do with the connectivity of the metrics of the of the. Uh, the metrics. You can try any any of your favorite um, websites. It's <laughs> crazy. Okay. Um, you can try uh, like my website. I, I've tried my website. And um, guess what? It's not the most popular in the web because I, I'm linking to the UCCS website. So the UCCS website is going to be top rank, right? Mine is going to be somewhere. 
Okay, but the, the strategy for, for uh, ranking higher is, is to have a high ranked page linked to you, which is not easy. You can link to all the famous uh, websites, right? But that's not going to make you. It has to be incoming. So, all right. Um, thank you. Yeah, the whole book is free, so you can at least download that chapter talking about it. I'm sorry, I'm going to pick up this. Funny in that, um, you know that I had a question about the, the chaos. Because the, I didn't check it all off because I didn't. Uh, yes. Chaos behavior. Yes, 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 yes. And I was looking for that.